Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and I hope you are doing well. This is the second video in the series that I'm doing about waterproof and breathable fabrics. And this video is totally dedicated to the question, what is actually waterproof? So if you want to learn something today then, enjoy this video. And welcome back to the tutorial expert advice video on the question, what is actually waterproof? But before I start talking about this subject, please let me introduce myself to the people who don't know me yet. Uh, my name is Gijs, I am a outdoor gear and bike reviewer and I'm based in the Netherlands. Um, I do my work totally independent, so manufacturers are not paying me for my videos and also not for my reviews. And if I review stuff, then always I send it back to the manufacturer. Now, if you like what I do at the end of this video, then please, um, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel because that really makes the effort worthwhile. Now, uh, let me start talking about what is actually waterproof. Waterproof, it's something that we never really had to think about when we are talking about rainwear. Because if you've seen the video that I did on breathable and waterproof clothing, then you will understand that um, in the past we only had basically waterproof rainwear. And that meant rain cannot penetrate the fabric so you would stay dry. Uh, but of course, when we're cycling, hiking, um, we are active, so we sweat. And because we're sweating, the fabric also got wet on the inside. So if you had a lot of exercise, it really didn't matter if you had a waterproof uh, garment on you because you would get wet from the sweat. Now, I don't know what's worse. Um, I would prefer probably to get wet from the rain. Then all of a sudden there was this breathable and waterproof fabric. Because of those waterproof and breathable fabrics, we had a urge to know what is actually waterproof or how waterproof are the fabrics and also what is the breathability of the fabrics. Now, breathability is a different video, but the answer to the what is actually waterproof, it's something that we need to know. And if you did not see the video on the waterproof and breathable fabrics uh, yet, then maybe I need to explain this a little bit. Most fabrics are breathable because there is a membrane in the fabric and a membrane is a sort of a very thin layer uh, with a lot of tiny holes in it and those tiny holes they are basically big enough for sweat uh, to pass basically this layer but the holes are small enough for water drops not to penetrate this layer so that means that it is waterproof and breathable but now because of those holes in it we want to know when does water penetrate? Because it's got something to do with pressure. Now, that's when they came up with the invention, basically, of the hydrostatic head test. And it's best explained by basically creating a tube with a water column. But I cannot demonstrate this with a real water inside of this, because the seal at the bottom on the jacket, well, I would have water all over the place. But the hydrostatic head test, or the water column test, is basically taking a very big tube and fill it with water and at a certain time the water pressure inside this tube will be bigger than basically uh, the resistance of the fabric. So that will mean that the water will penetrate those tiny tiny holes and it will start leaking. Now in um, real life um, we always communicate this or we always mostly it is communicated with the millimeters of water that you can put on top of a fabric. And I'm talking about, let's say, 5,000 millimeter of water or 10,000 millimeter. Um, that is one bar of pressure. And 10,000 millimeter is actually a water column, a tube of 10 meters high. Now imagine that you do this with a tube of 28 or 30 meters. It never happened. I talked to quite a lot of laboratories in the past and also in the last couple of weeks and they all explained to me that this test, how we all explain this with a water column and a tube and measuring it, it's just not true. The hydrostatic head test is basically done by a machine. And now we're talking about the machine that I'm having here. Um, this is a Souter tester and a Souter tester is a machine that was developed basically in the beginning when Gore uh, started to make um, waterproof and breathable membranes. And it's made by a sewing machine factory that is called Pfaff. Now this one, it's not mine, I borrowed it from a shop in the Netherlands and I'm very grateful that I have this one here because now I can show you basically that 
what we always like to explain with a water column of a lot of length that it's actually a small machine. Now let's take the machine and I'll show you how it works. And let me put it a little bit towards you. You can also see the manometer that's over here. Now let me take my jacket. Um, the Suter Tester, it is quite a clever device because basically it is a big water reservoir made out of solid steel. Um, there is a filler cap on top and there is a manometer here. And I've got a bellow um, to pump basically air into the reservoir. And that means that in the reservoir you get a buildup of pressure. Now, because there is a little hose running from underneath uh, the reservoir into basically this round disc and there is a rubber seal here on this round disc there is a seal as well it's just like a edge made uh, in the aluminium and there is a mesh part on top of it now now let me show you how this actually works and let me take a piece of my old jacket and i've prepared this of course because otherwise it would be well not that easy to show you how this works and um, what i do i put a piece of fabric basically between the two discs and when I apply the lever and I press it now it clicks solidly into place. Now what happens if I use the bellow um, and I start pumping then you will see that the water pressure is rising and you will also see that if you look closely that the fabric um, is getting on the, the basic onto the mesh and the mesh is there to prevent the fabric from blowing up basically like a balloon because the pressure that I'm building, um, I'm already at 0.4, which is a water column of 4,000 millimeters, which is four meters. Now, this is a machine that a lot of, uh, that's used a lot in shops just to check if a garment is still waterproof. And that's why it only goes to one bar, which is 10 meters of water column in simulation. And from eight I've discovered that this is quite an old machine, I borrowed it, um, that the bellow it's not that snug anymore on the device itself. So it takes quite some effort to get to one bar of pressure. Now this is one bar of pressure, you can see that the fabric is totally into the mesh and that it is not leaking. Now this is the one that a lot of shops basically use to check if stuff is still waterproof. Of course if we're talking about official uh, lab ratings they take different machines that are automated that build up pressures that are way higher because otherwise you can never get at 30,000 millimeters. Now let me release the pressure again and I'll show you some things that often go wrong in waterproof jackets. And one of those things that do go wrong quite a lot of times is, for example, on the seams. Because seams, there's always a lot of stress on seams by pulling it on, maybe with wearing a backpack, and you get a lot of wear and tear on seams. Also because the layer is most of the time a little bit thicker. And I'll show you how this works if we proof, try this with the waterproofness. Now, let me have a look. Where did I put the seam leakage? Ah... Uh, and of course it's always marked on the other side where you don't see it that very clearly but here it is where is it it's over there so same thing you can see that there is the seam when i pull the lever again now close the air release valve and i will start pumping again and again you will see that the fabric is and already here you can see bubbles and water flowing now Punctures and uh, leaks on seams, they are most of the time quite visible to the naked eye just by sometimes holding the fabric against a window and let the sunlight do its work and you can sometimes see the holes. Now let me get release the clamp again, take my piece of tissue and dry it a little bit. Now there is the other one, it's basically where the shoulder has been worn through and now I need to look very carefully where that one was. And with the naked eye this damage is very very hardly visible. Release the clamp, put it firmly on there, close the air pressure valve again 
And now let's pump up the pressure. Isn't that a nice song as well? Now let's start pumping, pumping, pumping. And already you see on a lot of different spots bubbles appearing. So that means that the surface of the breathable fabric is damaged over a wider area. And that means, well, it's very well breathable in that respect. But this is a leakage that, you know, when the DWR coating on the outside, on the face fabric, and if you don't know what DWR coating is, then please have a look at the video that I did earlier on uh, the breathable and waterproof fabrics. Uh, link in the description. Um, then you've got a proper area where you have a leak. And in this case, well, you can do a patch, of course, but I don't think this is going to be a good solution. Now, still, you know, I can apply a little bit more pressure, but the water will keep on flowing, flowing and flowing. So there's no point in going any further. Now, let's get that one out of the way. And now let's talk about what is waterproof legally. We've seen this one is not waterproof anymore. But if I have this problem, then if I go to into a shop to check it with this machine, what is actually waterproof? Now, if we talk about the Netherlands, and I think this is for Europe the same, then waterproof legally is 1300 millimeters, which is not a lot. If we talk about the US, uh, as far as I know, it is 1500 millimeters, and that's not a lot either. Now, what is waterproof for the outdoors? Um, I've been talking to a lot of experts also in laboratories and also of colleagues who do a lot of outdoor testing. And we generally think that waterproof is starting from 3000 millimeters, 5000 meters in that range. And um, it differs, of course, from what activity you are doing. Let's say, for example, you are a real alpinist. You like to go into the mountains with a heavy backpack then a waterproof jacket of 5,000 millimeters is not enough because you are wearing a backpack. Um, and that's not all. For example, if you are wearing a um, waterproof and breathable pant, um, then there's something else that is also very important. And this is something that we call pressure points. Because what I'm doing here, it's waterproof on a wider surface. But when you are into the mountains, and for example, you kneel down on your knee with your waterproof and breathable pants, then on that little spot of your knee, into the wet grass, there is a lot of pressure applied. And that's about three quarters of your body weight. And, and there's one thing that you maybe don't think about, but even if you are wearing a backpack, a heavy backpack, for example, um, then the waterproofness and the pressure points apply too. Because on the collarbones, that's where the shoulder straps are, and also on your hip bones, where the hip belt is, um, that is also a pressure point. So that's also where the waterproofness of the fabric should be higher than regularly. Now, if you have a fabric that does not have a high waterproofness rating, then it might mean that the pressure on the fabric is higher than basically the waterproofness. So, if you're into the mountains, buy a jacket or a pen that has a higher waterproofness rating. And I always like to think about 10,000 and above, that must be good enough. Does everybody need those high ratings? No, of course not. Because if you're just planning to buy a waterproof and breathable jacket to walk the dog during the daytimes or in the evening in the rain, um, then you can do, of course, with a waterproofness that has a lower number. Because you're not wearing a backpack, you don't have those special points, and it's just to keep you dry. Now, there is one last thing that a lot of people ask me, and that is basically, what is the difference between waterproof and water resistant? Well, the answer is quite simple and logical, because waterproof means no penetration of water whatsoever. And water resistance means, well, penetration of water is possible after a certain amount of time. But now I know quite a lot of fabrics that have been so tightly woven that although they are not waterproof, they are very, very water resistant and they will be resistant to water for quite a long time as well. So if you're taking that kind of jackets into a longer shower, you will not have a problem. Now, in legal terms, I already said it, waterproof is 1300 millimeters, which is 0.0. 13 bar and water resistant is 800 millimeters 0.08 bar so the difference between what is waterproof and what is water resistant is 0.05 bar or 500 millimeters now you know what i wanted to tell you about what is actually waterproof and a little bit about what is resistant and now let me perform one little test again with my suitor tester or with my borrowed suitor tester because I think it's a really nice test. Let's make a puncture. 
And now we've got a fountain. I always like playing with water. Now, let me take off the rear sneeze valve because otherwise everything will be wet. I really hope you like this video and that it is useful to you. And if it is, then please give it a like and leave a comment below. And also, if you've got any suggestions, remarks or questions, please use the comment section because that's what it's for and I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now, if you really like this video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I upload a new video because more followers means more videos. Now, if you're not totally convinced yet about what I do, then please take a close look at the gear that I tested in my Outdoor Gear Favorite playlist. And I'll put it up here and also in the description below. And if you like what I do in the end, then please subscribe anyway. Um, if you continue watching, then please enjoy my videos. And if you're done for today, then enjoy the outdoors. Ciao, ciao! Bam! And now it's a wrap and I can clean up the mess. Which is not a problem. Did you know I did this video before I did actually this one? I did actually the same video, but I made a terrible mistake. And I didn't see it at that time because I didn't put the face fabric down. I put the face fabric up. Quite stupid. Thanks, L. Buckley, who noticed it. Well done.